Hey guys, Jim here. Let's hop straight into Guest Blade episode number 21. This is a pretty fun one to do because it's a little bit outside of the realm of knives that I typically show, uh, either from my personal collection or through Guest Blades. This uh, it really leans much more toward an art knife than anything else. This is going to be a David Broadwell Technis done in Mokutai Bolsters Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber 3D Contoured Scales. This thing is really, really beautiful. Um, and the design concept behind this, and we'll get a little bit more into that later, uh, is art knife first and uh, practical slash tactical carry knife second. So he's really combining the, uh, the two forms, the two styles of knife making into one knife by his own definition. It will be up to you to determine as to whether it leans uh, more heavily toward one or the other in your personal opinion. Now, uh, today's knife was uh, donated by a good friend of mine named Jerry. You guys know him here on YouTube and on Instagram under the handle GKTII. So go check out his channel. The dude has an amazing collection, like crazy, crazy stuff. Don't bother trying to offer him trades for his stuff because he don't trade. Every now and then he will sell a knife or two, but it's it's not really all that common. He seems to really know what he wants. He buys it and he tends to to hold on to it. He is one of the newer collectors on the scene, and um, you know he's been buying up some really great Grail worthy knives over the past few months, especially. And a lot of really, really, really hard to get stuff. And, you know, this is a, a prime example of that. You know, these are not plentiful in the marketplace. I know uh, Mr. Broadwell is taking orders, but uh, I don't know how long his wait is. A few of these have made their way to dealers' hands over the past month or two. I know Blade HQ got a whole bunch, and I think that might be where Jerry bought this one. I'm not entirely certain. But what you're looking at here is... An artist. First and foremost, David Broadwell is an artist. And, you know, that's really exemplified just by visiting his website. You know, you're not going to go to broadwellknives.com or davidbroadwellcustomknives.com. It's broadwellstudios.com. And that gives you an idea right there that there's something a little bit different about him than other knife makers. And while you are immediately greeted with knives when you get to the site... You'll also see that he offers a lot of different stuff. He offers uh, pens that he makes out of a lot of the same kind of uh, materials that he'd make a knife out of, you know, with titanium and mokutai and things like that. Um, he does uh, jewelry every now and then. He does some really cool stuff. And he began his life as, with an interest in art. And that really explains the flowing lines and the, and the things that you're seeing here. I mean, this is very, very uh, art knife right here when you look at the way the... Uh, the lightning strike carbon fiber scale has been contoured. Really, really interesting look there. And I have to apologize. My uh, my sinus medication is completely worn off. It's a little bit early in the morning. I usually do these at night. So my apologies if I'm a little bit sniffly. So David started making knives in his very first knife in 1981. Uh, and it's funny because you know you hear a lot of the same stories about how some guys start. And he did it the same way. I've heard a few others. He took a broken file and created his first knife out of it. Now, along with being an artist, he was also a machinist for a living. And he gave that up around 1989 and started making knives full time. And he's been doing it ever since. And he creates some really beautiful pieces of art. And the way he describes it is it's it's art that functions. It's an art knife that happens to be a practical uh, slash tactical carry knife. So what you're getting into here is actually a bigger knife than you might expect. I'm going to lay this down next to a couple of others. We'll put it next to my RJ Martin Q36 and with my crisp black sterling silver skull on there. I'm very proud to have that. That's a, that's a hell of a skull. Put that now next to something almost as colorful. Uh, my Chris Reeve Omnumzan, the Chris Martin 
customized for me. And you see that, you know, the Technis actually dwarfs both of these. And the only thing I think that I have, at least within immediate reach to me right now, that would be fairly comparable size would be a Wilmoon Mark VI. This is the uh, the giveaway knife that I'm still giving away. It's going to be, well, what is today? Today's Saturday. So day after tomorrow, uh, actually day after that, Tuesday, I'll be announcing the new winner. Since the first winner never claimed it. So there it is. So for those of you that have held a Mark VI, uh, you know the, the, uh, the basic size. Uh, you've got a lot of the same size here, but David's knife is quite a bit slimmer. It might be easier for a lot of people to carry. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Now let's talk about the construction because when you buy into a knife at this price level, you're looking twelve, thirteen hundred bucks directly from David. Uh, you will pay more, most likely, from a dealer. You know, you expect something that is amazing. You expect something that's going to be. Big steps, big levels above production knives and mid-tech knives and in, in that kind of lofty area of these, these wonderful high-end customs. One of the, the, the contradictions I find on his website that makes this a little bit difficult is, you know, he talks about the art of hand knife making and then in the, uh, you know, on the same page talks about uh, using CNC um, uh, to preform his materials. So I can't really tell you for certain how much handwork goes into each one because as I'm trying to research it, uh, the website kind of contradicts itself. I will say this, that his blades are all uh, freehand ground. He doesn't use jigs. I'm assuming he's uh, CNCing or water jet, the, the basic overall profile, and then bringing it down by hand. He's got a really nice satin finish here. Looks like a hand rub satin finish on the primary bevel. Top swedge is also done in a really nice satin. And then he does this really cool etch work on the flats. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but it's, uh, it's, it's almost like tree bark. That's about the best way I can describe it. And I'm certain that he probably has a much prettier name for it. But that's almost like a uh, like a tree bark look. It's got a nice refined edge on it. Uh, I haven't really cut anything with it, but uh, just by kind of uh, feeling it, you see it's got a pretty decent edge. I wouldn't call it a scalpel or razor sharp by any means, uh, but it seems like it would uh, probably fare well for uh, everyday tasks. Nice tip on there. It's kind of a unique blade shape. It's something that I really haven't seen uh, really anybody else doing. I don't know that it's really my particular style because I had looked at buying one of these when they were uh, a little bit more available a few weeks ago. And I love the overall look of it. But I'm just not sure that particular blade shape is really for me. Now, he does make a design that I'm very interested in that I found on his website. So I'll probably be looking into that. After experiencing the quality level that he's displayed here, uh, I would have complete confidence in spending the money with him. Now, one of the things that I want to point out as quickly as I can is the bolster area meeting up with the scale. Now, I had discussed a particular uh, one of my Will Moons. Uh, you know, because Will Moon does a lot of CNC work and, and machine work and stuff like that. But the one that I had done in the Orange Sea Tech was a, was a hand-built knife because he was in between CNC machines. He had sold one and he was waiting for the arrival of his next. And people were just blasting me left and right because they're like, well, you didn't point out that there was a gap in between the Sea Tech scale and the titanium. These are guys, obviously, that are not buying a lot of handmade knives. There's going to be teeny tiny little imperfections in pretty much any hand-built knife. And you usually take that into account. It sh there shouldn't be glaring errors, obviously, but there are definitely going to be, you know, little areas that you can tell from one knife to the next that this was done by hand, not by a machine. 
And what you're going to see here is a little bit of a gap, space and material. And even the shape of the scale, not exactly the same as the shape of the bolster, most notably right there. Now, some people want to look at that and go, oh, well, that's, that's terrible fit and finish. And yeah, honestly, it could have been done a little bit better. But I look at it as this is an indication of a hand-built knife. This shows that somebody's hands were involved with forming and mating up these materials. Now, as you see it from this angle, there's really not a big difference from the Mokutai to the Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber. When you view it from this angle, you can see a little bit of that gap. And the same thing here on this side. A lot more flush here. It's almost perfect right there. But this shows that, you know, this is really something that was done by hand. So I have a particular appreciation for that. People that are only buying production knives or mid-tech knives or from custom knife makers that really use uh, smart machinery to do everything. They may be accustomed to a different type of fit on the components and they may look at that as a bad thing. I look at it as this is a unique knife that will be unlike any other. If he made 10 more knives that looked with the same identical components, they're still going to be different. And that's what's cool about it. Every blade grind is going to be slightly different because, again, he's not using jigs. Everything is done freehand. So, you know, the primary bevel on here may go a little bit higher on somebody else's blade, maybe a little bit lower on somebody else's. Every li tiny little thing could be different. The ergonomics on this are fantastic. For an artsy knife, you wouldn't expect that. He's got a nice forward choil here. Nice relief in the frame or in the handles. Very comfortable in the hand. He's got a relief cut here for your thumb. Opposite of a thumb ramp, it's actually going down into the blade. And then it ramps up here. It's kind of like a, a really far back set harpoon if you want to look at it that way. But it's a, it's a really nice fit. There's no jimping. Uh, it's not really an overly tactical knife. It's meant to be more of a pretty, pretty knife um, that you could use. But it's not really going to be used for any kind of tactical situations. So it's uh, completely devoid of any jimping. It's very smooth, very nice feel in the hands. Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber is nice. I've only found one little prick, and that's right there. One little piece of the copper wire strand coming out. Everything else seems to be nice and smooth. Nice clean hardware, simple pivot. Kind of a moon disc pivot on the back side. The Mokutai work is beautiful. And here's where you start really looking at the quality. Everything matches up really, really nicely here in the bolster area around the titanium. Nice clean pivot. Very tight tolerances between uh, the pivot hole and the, the pivot itself. No additional gap that's unnecessary. You look at the finishing work on the spine of the blade. Very, very nicely done. Everything about this you know, really screams expensive, high-end custom knife. A little less on the practical side. Now, he does use a G10 backspacer here with a lanyard loop. You're not going to fit 550 paracord through there. You'll have to, uh, you know, take the middle out of it uh, to be able to use that. He offers these standard in G10 and titanium. Then you can upgrade. He has the price list there for going into Mokutai and Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber. And I'm fairly certain, as custom as he is, if you had a request for a different material, that he'd probably be able to satisfy that. You know, let's say you wanted regular carbon fiber and zirconium. It's probably something he might be able to uh, to do for you. I love watching his wor uh, work in progress pictures on Instagram. He's got some really great ideas. He brought some really beautiful knives to uh, to the G5, to the gathering in Vegas recently. He's got an artist mind. He looks at everything with the artist's eye. And when you look at his knives, you expect them to be a lot more expensive. You know, this is something that you might see from, you know, I don't really want to throw out any names, but, you know, a, a more art knife dedicated maker. And you could pay two, three times the amount of money for. The smoothness is fantastic. He's obviously using bearings. I'm going to have to assume IKBS. Very, very smooth. 
and it's a pretty fast flipper for a four inch blade because four inch blades you know it takes quite a bit because you've got a lot of area from the tip to that pivot so to get it to swing out fast on a four inch is actually quite a remarkable thing it doesn't really drop very easily under its own weight for the first third so it's probably got a little bit more break in to go I know Jerry just got this a couple of weeks ago the only the only gripe I really have on this is the liner lock the lockup is really fine but it's a really really thin liner lock now it's not really a knock against the maker because again uh, to the art knife crowd that is really what you're accustomed to seeing with a more tactical knife you'll generally see a much 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 thicker uh, set of titanium scales inside and a much thicker titanium lock so that you have a stronger interface a stronger lockup I wouldn't expect to have any issues there's no real but there's a little bit of wiggle actually and you can actually watch yeah, a little bit of lock slip there so the lock geometry is probably something that on this particular knife should be looked at uh, I really wouldn't trust this with a spine whack it, it would definitely close up on your fingers so slightly different blade geometry and uh, a much thicker liner lock on there would certainly greatly benefit this I didn't even notice that before until I just did that that's kind of a big deal so Jerry you should probably have David take a quick look at this again I wouldn't probably call that representative of his work I've never heard a single person ever complain about a Broadwell knife uh, so it could just be a fluke but yeah uh, definitely I would definitely go thicker on that another thing is I would make this uh, lock protrude a little bit more because you're not this is the all these surfaces are equal so your thumb doesn't really want to grab that you're having to actually put your thumb down into the frame to get into it I'd want to see something just a teeny touch maybe like an extra thousandths right there just so you have something for your thumb to grab onto a little bit more easily but the action is so wonderfully smooth and the, and the knife is even beautiful in a closed position I love how the flowing lines that come off of the bolster flow up into this top swedge area of the blade so it creates this really really appealing look to the eye he's done a lot of fine detail work throughout the entire knife I don't know if you can really see the texture but there's a texture that goes all the way around the titanium and flows all the way into the design there by the way is the centering on the blade the clip I'm not a fan of simple spring titanium clip you guys know me at this price range once you get over four hundred dollars you should have a nicely sculpted uh, contoured clip spring clips just don't fly for me uh, so looking at a twelve thirteen hundred dollar knife uh, that's one thing I would say that um, if I were having him make a custom knife for me that I would point out immediately hey I'd like to explore different options for the clips now again you're dealing with a custom maker not a guy that's buying stuff off the shelf so while there would certainly be an extra charge for it I don't see why he wouldn't say okay well let's talk about this let's talk about that me I would want a 3d sculpted clip that's just me something a little bit fancier a little bit more up to the level of the money that you're spending and again you guys know I, I did the same knock on my RJ Martin I love my RJ Martin I mean this is a fantastic knife but for the money that you spend on these uh, maker price is 850 but you're gonna spend 16 1700 bucks to get one on the secondary market this is just purely unacceptable so really that's about it that's the only negatives I can really bring out on the entire knife it's something that I would think anybody would treasure in their collection uh, the Mokutai is absolutely beautiful on this knife and it's a nice complement to the lightning strike carbon fiber could have just been regular carbon fiber but you know having the copper strands come out really complements the golden colors that come out of the Mokutai so it's a nice tie in there functionally it's a great knife as far as the action the quickness of the deployment uh, the comfort and all of the various hand positions I haven't tried any reverse grip here uh, it's, not, it's not bad in a reverse grip but it's certainly not uh, not made for that but all the forward grips it feels nice 
The only gripes, again, would just be the uh, the size of the liner lock, the way that it's engaging uh, the blade at this point. That would really be about it. This would be something that I would love to have in my collection. Um, so definitely look out in the future. I'm probably going to be hitting up Mr. Broadwell and see what his wait times are for a slightly different model and see uh, see what maybe we can get going here. Jerry, thank you so much for donating this beautiful knife. We are going to cut it off here. A full 20 minutes. Oh, my goodness. And there are still points I didn't touch on. But let's give you one last up-close HD look. With the sculpting and the beauty of this knife all the way around. I certainly see why so many people respect David why his work is so treasured. You can see the beauty coming out from any angle you view this knife from. There is a touch and a detail to every portion. He really hasn't left anything untouched. Even the clip that I'm not a fan of, he still does a lot of really nice texturing, a lot of a uh, little bit of heat color in there. Just does a beautiful job throughout. So there you go, guys. David Broadwell, Technis. What a beauty.